What's going on, guys? So it's Monday. It's around 11 a.m. First session of the week. Just got through warming up, sipping this Starbucks, trying to shake off the cobwebs. I'm up to like 327 pounds right now. Not exactly sure the exact amount. I, I didn't convert it. It's 145 kilograms. I'm working up to 150 kilograms, which is going to be 331 pounds. So what's going on? Bench press record, state record. We're building towards in the 220 pound weight class. How are we getting there? All right. I'm doing about three bench sessions a week. And now just to be clear, I also do squats and deadlifts. They're just not that impressive. You could go back in the archives and see what my maxes are on those. But back to what we're talking about here. How are we building up the bench? At least three sessions a week on bench press. I only posted one of those sessions last week where I did five sets of five with 331 pounds. So what are we doing this week? Logic would dictate that we're gonna add some more weight to the bar, right? Maybe five sets of five with 340 pounds? No. This is a volume phase. We're focusing on upping the volume. So instead of putting more weight on the bar, we're gonna add more sets to the session. Six sets of five with 331 pounds. Why is that? Volume has been shown to be the core, the main driver of muscle growth. The main thing that causes muscles to get bigger is volume, total volume. Now, if you're not aware how to figure out, calculate total volume, it's sets times reps times weight. The more volume you do, do you do, the bigger your muscles get, okay? Up until a certain extent where you hit your genetic limits and your muscles, it's gonna be a um, diminishing returns, right? Until then finally you reach a point where your muscles really ain't gonna grow anymore. But I guess that's probably up for debate. People think maybe it just gets very, very slight muscle growth. All right, whatever. Why do we want bigger muscles? A bigger muscle has more potential for strength. It doesn't always mean that a bigger muscle is a stronger muscle. It means it has more potential for strength. So after we're done with the volume block, have a peak and block that's where it's also sometimes referred to as a potentiation phase it's where we're trying to get the most strength we can out of that muscle we build the muscle as big as we could get it and then we try to get the most strength we can out of it we train that bigger muscle to be a stronger muscle we teach that muscle to handle heavy weight we're also priming our nervous system getting our nervous system adapted to handle on heavy weight so when I'm about four weeks out from the meet, that's when I'm gonna start. That's when I'm gonna switch over to a Bulgarian style training, where I'm gonna be doing heavy singles on squats and bench every day, deadlifts, heavy singles about twice a week. All right, let's get to it. Last warm-up set. I'm gonna start recording the sets when I get to my first working set. All right, I'm done with the warm-ups. Got 150 kilograms on the bar, 330.75 pounds. 330 and three quarters of a pound. Three quarter pounds? I don't know. All right, cranking the wrist wraps, why is that? What's the, what's the purpose of wrist wraps? We talked about this already in bench press tips. It's not because you have wrist pain. I really crank these things. And you wanna get them high up so the joint is in the middle part. So what's the point? Why are we doing this? To alleviate wrist pain? I'm trying to talk and crank them at the same time. No, to create a stable joint. You ever grab a heavy weight and it, it shakes a little in your hands? Power is leaking, power is bleeding out of any unstable joint. You want to crank these things. Stabilize that joint. It's going to allow a greater force transfer. More of the force that's coming from our chest is being transferred to the bar when the joints are stable. All right, first set coming up. Let's go. Coming up on my second set. Now you might have noticed I got my elbow sleeves on today. Why is that? I mean, they're not gonna allow me to wear elbow sleeves in the meat, so why would I be wearing them now? Just like I said, volume is the stressor that's gonna cause muscle growth. Volume is the biggest stressor, period. So when you're deep into these volume blocks, you start feeling beat up. 
Your muscles aren't getting bigger because you're giving them massages every day. It's because you're beating on them. You're, you're stressing them. And in order to adapt to that stress, they get stronger, they get bigger. But at the same time, we're stressing our joints. So I'm feeling a little banged up now. You actually start feeling better. The fatigue starts dropping as you go into the peaking phase. You, you start feeling stronger. That's why it's all built to lead up to when you go into the meat, you feel your strongest. Now you would think just intuitively that handling heavier weight would be a bigger stress on your system. You feel more beat up, but it doesn't work that way. So you can see through the studies, you can see through the literature, the research, you can see from all the top coaches that volume is the stressor that's gonna, it's gonna be the biggest stressor, it's gonna cause the most strength adaptations, the most muscle growth. But you can see through your own experience, you're gonna feel more beat up when you're deep into these volume blocks. When we start peaking, when we start handling heavy, heavier weight, we're doing less reps, we're doing less sets, we're doing less total volume. And that's when the fatigue drops and the strength goes up. So the strength is going up and the fatigue is dropping. And then we go into the meet and we feel our strongest in months. And for me, it would be in a year because I haven't competed in a year. All right, enough talking. Let's get to the second set. So I've, I've explained the importance of volume. So at this point, you might be asking yourself, well, if it's all about volume, why not just put 225 on the bar and get hundreds of reps a session? Now, well, there is a place for that. That's called a hypertrophy phase or a bodybuilding phase or a block. That's gonna be when you're the furthest away from your competition. But as you get closer to competition, you wanna get more sports specific. Now in competition, I gotta handle the heaviest weight possible. So doing sets at 10s to 20s, it doesn't carry over as well as, now this is called a strength building block. So I'm doing sets of fives. And like I said, as we get within a month of competition, then it's gonna be the peaking block. That's where I'm priming my nervous system to handle the most weight possible. Third set, let's go. Listen, I know this is not the most entertaining thing to watch. It's, and it's definitely not the most exciting way to train. You know, it's not, there's no glory in it. This isn't me and potatoes, man. This is, it, it hurts, it sucks. You feel fatigued, you're beat down, and you're not handling heavy weight. You're handling weight that's nowhere near your max. So it's not fun. But this is the bread and butter, this is the meat and potatoes. This is where you build the strength. This is where your strength base comes from. It, it, you know, it's too many people going to the gym and they want they do it for fun. They want to have fun. They, they want it to be exciting. They want to push one rep maxes every time they train. Listen, that's why they stall out. 
and they'll get to a certain point. You can build to a 315 bench like that, but you want to get elite, you're not going to do it like that. The fun comes. Listen, what's more fun? Going in there every time, trying to make every single training session fun, where they're not even training sessions then, they're just workouts, or where you're building towards something, and the workouts suck, man. You get stuck in a rut, you're in these volume blocks, they just suck. Everything feels beat up, you're pushing this volume, trying to, you're, you're stressing your whole system, but you build to something great. You build to something where other people ain't doing it, man. You build to a point where you go in there to that competition, and you hit something that you wouldn't be able to hit if you didn't put in that work. That work that other people don't want to put in, that grinding work. Not that, see, other people think, oh, I'm a savage, I'm gonna grind out. They grind out one rep maxes every time they go. You're not a savage, you're an egomaniac. You're so in love with yourself, you gotta see yourself in the mirror hitting a one rep max every time you go, but then you stall out. Put on your hard hat, get your lunch, go to work every day. It's like, you know, people think, oh, a drug dealer who lives a fast life is something to be glorified. But if you look at it, it's the man that gets up at five in the morning, goes to work, brings home for his family. He's going the hard route. That's the hard route. He knows it's the hard route. He's doing what's right. This is this is similar to that. It ain't flashy. It's putting in that hard work, but it's building towards something greater. All right, fourth set coming up. Yeah. 